Bill Teagans. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. A good week for the Cowboys, a win on the road in the Big 8. It's always sweet, and also the final non-conference game of the year, a win on the road. They may not have been real pretty, Coach, and they may have been a struggle, but, boy, you'll take 2-0 and any time. We've said it many times that uh, I've had ball clubs play exceptionally well and lose, and sometimes we don't play as well as we'd like and win, and I like the latter. And uh, this week at Kansas State, uh, we faced a very competitive ball club in the Wildcats, and we beat them 71-61. to 61. They turn around two days later and go to Lawrence and upset the Jayhawks. So very good defensive game. Both teams, I thought, played well, uh, but it was a hard-fought game, and then uh, we did finish – Last evening up in Springfield, uh, we had to come from behind and beat a very competitive Southwest Missouri State Ball Club, 68-63. Bryant Reeves is playing very well. I know you hope to get more out of the guards. They kind of slumped a little bit in the last couple of games. Well, Bryant had a, a great week, 55 points and 22 rebounds in the two games. But Randy Rutherford and Brooks Thompson, two guys that have been shooting the ball so well all season long, uh, really uh, struggled in both the games uh, this week. I think Randy was 5 out of 18 and Brooks was 4 out of 20. And uh, they've been shooting a lot better than that. And they're going to have to shoot a lot better than that against the University of Missouri, our next opponent here Saturday. Well, it was 2-0 and on the week, though, so it's a good week for the Cowboys. When we come back, we'll take a look at the highlights, starting out with Kansas State in Manhattan when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. And, Coach, last week at this time, we were talking about how sweet it would be to go on the road and grab two victories in the Big 8. You were able to do that at Kansas State. We've played uh, two conference games, and we've won at Norman against the University of Oklahoma and at Kansas State. And uh, when I looked at the schedule before the season began, I said, we're going to have to play three out of our first four on the road. I didn't like it, but now that we've won those two, well, it doesn't look quite as bad. But big crowd, they had over 13,000 people. And I think Kansas State realized that this was the most important game for them. They'd already lost at Missouri. This was their second conference game. Good lead pass. We missed three or four shots like that early in the game. And both teams, because of the fierce defense on the part of both ball clubs, uh, had a hard time scoring. That was a nice drive by Terry Collins, and that's the opening basket of the ball game. Fred Burley uh, cranks one up from three-point range and, and knocks it home. But we played eight minutes, and the score's at, tied at six. It was really tough there to hit. A, it was cold outside. It seemed like everybody had kind of a difficult time warming up even inside in that game. Good rebound by Scott Sutton. Uh, he, we had challenged him to become a better rebounder. In this ball game, uh, he had six rebounds and four assists and seven points. So he played one of the best games he's played uh, all season long. It's really tough to get the three-point shots off in this game. They, Kansas State played some really fine perimeter defense. Very good defense. We were only four out of 12 from uh, three-point range. That was a two-pointer by uh, Scott. Good steal by Brooks Thompson, and we uh, were able to to uh, get some baskets and transition, and there's one of them by, uh, by Scott. I thought Scott played one of his best games of the year against Kansas State. I agree. State. Came up with some big plays. Country had a very nice game with 16 rebounds, 22 points, and boy, that's a great move right there. Wonderful lead pass to Fred Burley, and uh, he laid it home. Ball never touched the floor in that round, and then Country seems to be back. Do you feel like he's back full strength, Coach? I think he's playing much better than he uh, did uh, <laughs> over in Hawaii. I'm not sure he's completely back, but he, uh, he did have a, a good week, 55 points and 22 rebounds. Rick's Thompson hit that basket from three-point range, converts the free throw. That was his fourth four-point play of the season, and that's really unusual because most coaches say don't foul three-point shots, and uh, Brooks has uh, been able to, to have that happen four times. And again, Kansas State comes up with a big play there, but Darrell Cunningham, their main rebounder, got into foul trouble. That was a big key in the ball game, and we kept going inside to uh, Bryant uh, because Cunningham, once he's on the bench, he's their best uh, uh, defensive man uh, as far as covering the pivot area. Good drive by Randy Rutherford. He misses the layup, but he uh, goes to the line, hits the first free throw, misses the second, but a great hustle play here by Brooks Thompson. Retrieves the ball and gets it back to Randy, and Randy drives to the hoop again. That's one thing that uh, has made Randy Rutherford a much better player, in my opinion, is the fact that he's now putting the ball on the floor and driving to the hoop. Whereas in the past, uh, too often he was uh, content just to play out on the perimeter and, and teams crowded him and uh, made it difficult. 35-30 at the half. Pretty good first half, especially defensively. Randy comes out fire, and there's Country, one of his 16 rebounds, right back in. Again, I think he's going right to the hoop a lot more than he was a few weeks ago. Much more uh, there for a while when he was in a slump. He was uh, falling away from the basket. 
I told Bryant uh, earlier today, I said, if you could uh, become a 75% free throw shooter, you'd be averaging about three more points a game because he goes the line so much. And that's an area of uh, the game we've got to get better is our free throw shooting. We're only shooting 67% as a team, but a lot of that uh, is a responsibility of Brian to get better nice because he's pass. only shooting 53%. Well, and we were talking about this on the plane last night. I mean, you have Fred Burley, Randy Rutherford, and uh, Brooks all shooting pretty well from the line. All shooting near the 80% mark. His country much more aggressive, and he's uh, he's feeling a lot better about himself. Uh, well, no doubt about that, and everybody's feeling better about him. <laughs> Another it's nice entry pass. Keone Robertson, uh, Scott Sutton, uh, Brooks, and Randy, uh, made some good passes into Brian, and too often uh, the guy uh, looks a lot better when a pass is made uh, in the right uh, position, and they, they did that in this ball game. Terry Collins with the drive of the hoop, and a little controversial play. Dana Altman, their coach, felt like it wasn't goaltending, but you can see here on the replay that he actually did touch the ball while it's on the cylinder. So the Cowboys come roaring back again, and uh, we Sutton on the wing. Boy, he is so good about it. Well, there's a shot you don't see too often. No, you don't see Scott drive very much. Sometimes you'll see him penetrate and pitch the ball, but uh, he took that one all the way to the basket, got fouled, hit the basket, three-point play, and we're up by 10 late in the ball game. Uh, we shot 47% from the field. That's a little below our 50-plus uh, uh, shooting percentage for the year, but we held him to 31.7% shooting. Shot by uh, Brooks Thompson, but uh, rebounded by Scott. And we just plan it out here. Boy, another big big win, win two and zero in the league, and uh, we'll look at Southwest Missouri coming up. Yeah, here's the end of the nice game. fast break here. Brooks Thompson off to Burley, and Fred likes to <laughs> dunk that basketball on the break. He enjoys that part of it. So there's the end of the ball game, and again the Cowboys are victorious by ten. You're two and zero. Oh. We're going to talk more about Missouri that's coming up on Saturday, but you got to feel good about where your team is right now. Well, you're seeing some strange things uh, happen in the Big Eight in that uh, I believe we've seen more people win on the road this early in the campaign than ever before. Uh, uh, there's been some, some games that uh, people have gone into the other ballpark, and in the, the time that I've been in the Big Eight, that's been very hard to do. So if we can take care of our uh, business here in gallagher Iba and go out on the road and, and win a few more, we've got a chance to challenge for the Big A championship. Well, let's take a look at last night's game, Southwest Missouri, and it was a good one again. The Cowboys struggling early, had to battle back this time. You got a shot there, that wild group up there in, uh, <laughs> in the baseline up there. Very active crowd. This is a big game for Southwest Missouri, and they really hadn't been playing that well. Nice pass from Fred Burley into Terry Collins, and that's the first basket of the game. But, boy, they were cranked, and that little guy right there was really cranked, Murdoch. He was 8 out of 18 from three-point range and really had a, a fantastic game. We tried uh, three different people on him, and we finally slowed him down late in the game when he got a little fatigued. But up to that point, well, boy, he was sticking a lot of tough shots. He ended up with 35 points, which I think was his uh, career high. One of the good things about last night's game, too, was country went right to the hoop. Both of their big men fouled out last night. We uh, were able to jam the ball inside to him, but uh, had our guard shot the ball a bit better, uh, the game wouldn't have been nearly as difficult. I don't believe I've ever seen Randy and Brooks both on the same day shoot as poorly as they did. Nice steal by Keani Roberts, and he drives it all the way to the basket. He, uh, he scored four points, but as I told him earlier today on his way to class, that uh, he played much better. He's getting where he's playing more under control, and. Uh, just a matter of time, we got to remember that he's still a freshman. And no matter how good you are on the high school level, it's always an adjustment when it comes to major college basketball. Different game. There's Murdoch to start the second half, and he drilled one from deep range. One of the big things that came out of this ball game last night, there's Keanu hitting his other basket, was the fact that we were down eight points with about six minutes to go and could have rolled over because that crowd was really active and they were playing with a lot of confidence. But we uh, reached down inside ourselves and uh, really displayed a lot of competitive spirit, played with a lot of poise, and uh, we were able to uh, pull this game out. And when you do that, then you can always draw on that experience somewhere down the line and uh, do the same thing. Well, you talked about it earlier on a radio broadcast about how difficult a place that place is to play, and it really is. I mean, the way the fans are right there on top of you. I've taken the Razorbacks in there a couple of times and escaped with, with narrow victory just like this one was. We uh, got to going to Brian on special scoring plays late. That's what we call a curl double, where you get a double screen for him, and, and uh, 
If he'd have converted his free throws a little bit better, he would have had a 40-point night. He ended up with uh, 33 points, but he missed, uh, uh, I guess, eight free throws. And, and uh, that's something, as I said earlier, we just got to get him where he's shooting better. Boy, Murdoch just firing in from long range there and there. You see it's a nine-point deficit right there. That's a nice play by Terry Collins. He drove in. Uh, he's getting where he's a better slasher, where he can drive into that basket and pull up and shoot the shot. And, and uh down the stretch. I hope he'll continue to improve. Country with another nice performance. I can't believe he only had, what did they say, six or seven rebounds. Yeah, that didn't six seem rebounds. Right. This is a big play in the game. Uh, Brooks Thompson, we doubled up and he stole the ball and that's Randy Rutherford hitting a basket that finally puts us ahead 58 to 57. And Randy hits another one right here. Fred Burley came over and ran a two-man play and, and uh, Boy, those were big baskets. And there we run what we call curl and bring it back, which where we try to isolate uh, Bryant Reeves down on the low post and he hit the basket. That's at Axley, a uh, young man who played at Bishop Kelly, a senior. Uh, he had a tough game, but he's a very, very good basketball player. The fact that even though you didn't shoot the ball very well, Randy didn't shoot the ball well, he came through, and you mentioned it with those two three-pointers. Those were really clutch shots. They were clutch shots, and uh, Brooks was able to convert free throws down the stretch. And right here, uh, you can see uh, we're still fighting, and actually misses a free throw. Uh, Scott Sutton gets the rebound and get the ball off to Brooks, and uh, they have to foul, and he goes to the line, hits two more. You can't hit those free throws when the game's on the line. You're asking for a lot of problems because you just magnified any turnover, missed free throw, missed layup, boy, uh, a dumb play, and uh, you don't have any time to recover. 13 and 4 on the year. You're, you're done with the non conference now. Well, we won five straight. We're through with the non conference. Now everything is uh, really serious business, and it all begins uh, this Saturday when we host Missouri. Uh, the Tigers are leading the conference with three. As with a three and zero record. So uh, one of the first pivotal games, I guess, uh, in conference play. Well, when we come back, we're going to hit the books with the Oklahoma State Cowboys on the Eddie Sutton Show, so stay with us. Welcome back. You know, the student and student athlete always comes first at Oklahoma State University. And in this week's Off the Court feature, Tom Dorado introduces us to one of the people who keeps that in focus. <laughs> He doesn't deal in X's and O's. He never blows a whistle. And he won't ever have to put together a scouting report. But Kevin Fight, Oklahoma State's academic counselor for basketball, is a coach in his own right. Fight oversees the academic side of Cowboy basketball. And he takes winning and losing as seriously as anyone who has ever paced that area known as the coach's box. It hurts. Uh if, if a kid doesn't do as well as, as you anticipated he would or if, if sometimes uh, they don't put out the effort or they get in a situation where, where maybe the travel has hurt them academically, definitely it, it, it becomes a personal issue and, and um, you know, I try to work as hard and provide as many services as possible to these kids so that they can succeed academically. I feel like I'm a, an extension of the coaching staff. I work with, with them extensively and with the students extensively. Uh, meet with Coach Sutton on a daily basis and, and uh, really the, the academic side of, uh, of athletics and intercollegiate basketball is definitely a, a, a part of the entire program and, and we have to work on it you know, from the beginning of the fall semester to the end of the spring. And uh, so yeah, I would say um, I'm an extension of the coaching staff and um, you know, kind of the, I guess it's been said in the past, the academic coach. The demands placed on today's student athlete require a progressive and effective classroom monitoring system. The time demands are incredible and um, you really have to admire some of these guys for what they do academically when you, when you consider the basketball thrown in there and, and the travel and, and when you get into the NCAA tournament quite a bit of, of, of time off campus. But um, I, I gather as much information as I can about each individual student athlete's uh, course courses have uh, keep all their course syllabi on file so that I can foresee any problems that may occur with uh, travel you know as far as having assignments uh, tests scheduled when they're on the road and and really um, foreseeing when they may need a tutor to assist them to prepare for either a, a, a paper or or an exam 
How often do these study sessions that we see here today, how often do they take place during the week? We do them four times a week. Uh, they usually last anywhere between an hour and a half and two hours. And um, we, at that time, try to get as many tutors involved with the students as we can. There's no question the student and student athlete comes first with head coach Eddie Sutton. Yeah, Coach Sutton has been tremendous to work with. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've been here now. This is my third season. And uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible that um, he, the emphasis that he puts on academics. I really enjoy working with him because it, it is a, a priority for him and he, he really does care about his, his um, basketball players, not only as, as their basketball ability, but, but how they progress academically and, and looks out for their best interests in that area. But I am a, a big college basketball fan, but I also feel the importance for education, and that's why I got in this field. And so, yeah, the combination of the two, I'd, I guess I'd like uh, you know, to, to be part of a national championship team and then uh, have some academic All-Americans thrown in there. That'd be nice. Another nice piece by Tom Dorado, and uh, Kevin Feit does an outstanding job uh, in the support system as far as helping our uh, student athletes. Steve Urias heads up that program, but uh, not very many players uh, get to go on and play basketball beyond the uh, college level, but all of them need to get their degree and, and get a quality education, which Oklahoma State can give them. If they'll go to class, we've got the help as far as tutors and, and a tremendous support system, but we want them all to get those degrees, and so Someday uh, they'll be successful uh, out there in the real world as they are on the basketball court. So we're very pleased with uh, our academic uh, support system that we have here. And uh, we've got a lot to talk about yet on the Eddie Sutton Show. We'll talk about the Big 8 in general and Missouri specifically because that's coming up when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Coach, we were talking earlier about the Big 8 race and it's been interesting the way uh, visiting teams have been able to fare already. I've never seen it like this. There, there have been 11 conference games played and there have been five times out of 11 games where the visitors have won. So uh, that's unusual in the Big 8. And you can see Missouri is leading the conference. We're right behind them. Uh, Nebraska got beat uh, last evening out of Colorado. Kansas uh, got beat earlier in the week by Kansas State. K-State, uh, uh, that was their first victory. Oklahoma won at Iowa State. Uh, Colorado, one and two, Iowa State, zero and three. Iowa State is going to have some problems right now because they lost Lauren Meyer, their fine center. Uh, he was in a car accident and broke his collarbone. He's going to be out for a few weeks. The schedule this week, uh, one of the marquee games early in the year, Missouri here Saturday afternoon at one o'clock against the Cowboys, Kansas at Iowa State right after that, and one evening game, Colorado at Kansas State. On Monday, Missouri leaves here and goes on up to Nebraska and play, so they've got a busy weekend. Florida Atlantic, a non-conference game at Iowa State. And on Wednesday, we go to Allen Fieldhouse to play the Jayhawks, and uh, K-State travels down to Norman to play the Sooners. Another non-conference game. I think Colorado's played every Cal State uh, <laughs> school in out there in California. They had Northridge the other night when they had a big earthquake. The Northridge team was playing in, in Boulder. What about the fact now that Missouri's coming in? Obviously, the Tigers are a team that we always seem to have uh, don't match up real well with. How do the Tigers look to you this well, year? We don't match up with them well at times defensively, but uh, they're a very good basketball team. Uh, this next two games uh, are really uh, pivotal games in a sense in that uh, you always have to protect your home grounds, and we've done a good job of that uh, during the time that I've been here at Oklahoma State. But Missouri does give you problems. Last year, you know, it took a great shot by country to, to win that game over the Tigers. Uh, they're the most seasoned ball club. You know, when they talk about our experience and our seniors, but uh, they have more seniors than we do. Uh, they've got four starters back from last year, and they've only lost twice. They lost at Arkansas in the opening game, and they lost uh, this oh, about 10 days ago up in South Bend in Notre Dame. But 12-2 and two be a great ball game Saturday afternoon. We're going to need all the support from our fans and I hope our student body goes crazy out there like some of the places we've been playing in. And it really is going to be good to be home for a conference It's game. only the sixth game uh, that we've had in Gallagher-Ibe Arena, so it is going to be great to be home. 
And again, it's a, just a terrific week coming up. Uh, most pivotal week of the season so far for you? I think so. You know, it's recruiting time too. Uh, Sean and Paul are both out recruiting this week. They've got 10 days, but they'll be back in for the game Saturday. Okay, so again, coming up, it's a big week. Saturday against uh, the Missouri Tigers at gallagher Iba with a 1 o'clock tip-off. Then Wednesday at uh, Kansas to take on the Jayhawks. Best of luck, and we'll see you next week. See you, Bill. Okay, for Coach Sutton, I'm Bill Teens. We'll see you next week on the Eddie Sutton Show.